Welkom bij uh, de Foriade in Almere, de Nederlands, bij uh, de Pixel Farming Booth. Mijn naam is Aaron Koekoek en ik ga je show you around on how we're making a healthy food from a healthy soil in a healthy environment um, in the Dutch climate. So how we're gonna do that? Uh, firstly, we're gonna check what we want to eat today. So I have this recipe of kohlrabi relish. It looks like this, quite lovely actually. So it's a, a kohlrabi relish with uh, uh, white onions and there are some uh, gold flowers uh, on it. So the thing is how to get this from a healthy soil uh, in a nice environment. So the way we do this is first we're going to plan on the system uh, how we can put these plants together in one location. So the way we do this in the, in the winter time is we uh, prepare it in the digital twin environment and the way this goes and you can see it on this video is actually we just take a piece of land we plan each plant on its own spot its own pixel, as we uh, call it, uh, and at this site uh, we, the, the plants will grow and we will take care of these plants individually using the robot by going with tools, going around the plants to keep the, the weeds away uh, and that way uh, keeping this healthy soil once they need it. So <clears throat> I think it's a nice thing to, to, to see how this looks like in the, in the real world. So down here we see the simulated version all of the fields, so you see all the pixels down there with the rows of, of plants uh, standing side by side. We have been simulating the weather conditions uh, in winter time with, with all kinds of uh, situations. And that way we knew at what time to do what uh, soil preparation, to do what uh, type of uh, actions to keep the plants healthy and uh, which plants to put side by side to get this healthy interaction, to get this biodiversity uh, working for us instead of against us. So the field you see down here, you can also see on the outside, and this is why um, this way of producing food gives you this uh, nice, uh, beautiful environment. So the first thing we did was check the kohlrabi and let's see what the kohlrabi looks like when we go onto the plants actually. So let's walk this way, down here, you'll see a couple of pixels with different type of seeds that had to go into the ground. So you see a couple of them standing down here, and I think I uh, have to look into the assortment, what was down there. I believe the kohlrabi pixel is down here. So these seeds for the kohlrabi have been put into the soil uh, somewhere in uh, February. Uh, to, to pre-grow the plants and that they produce a small pixel which was planted uh, by the robot in, uh, uh, in April somewhere. So let's see on the outside the way that looks and we're going to walk uh, that way to uh, show you. So What we saw, what you see down here is you see, you'll see the, the field down there and you see already what you saw in the digital twin. You'll see the same strips and pixels of plants um, growing down there. So there's a, quite a big difference when you see the traditional growing of crops, but then you have a monoculture, one crop covering a field, well, maybe 10 times the size of this. And down here already, you see the, initially you'll see the, the strip crops, which have been put there by Bayo, uh, our, our seed partner in this case, this project. And you'll see them growing side by side. So down here, you'll see a, a red beet, growing down there a celery, an onion, and there is already an harvested strip, strip down there, which I'll get back to you uh, later on in the presentation. So, so this is strip cropping. Down there, where the robot is driving, you see the pixel farming in real life. So what you, what, what you see is the difference between strip cropping and pixel farming is that actually you'll have even more biodiversity on one area. So down here you have the red beets, you have the onions in the next pixel, and then you have your celery in the next pixel, and then again a red beet, uh, celery down here, yellow beet down here. So it's quite a lot of different crops, and this is what bi biodiversity really is about, that you have these different crops standing in the same area, which results in having different type of insects uh, being able to protect the crops and go from one area 
to the next when they think it's it's required. And that way, you get a better interaction between these different plants. Now, in our recipe, we were looking for the um, the kohlrabi and the onion. So down here, you'll have a kohlrabi. Down there, we have an onion. Uh, this is the red beet in this case. So the funny part is that you can see uh, for one dish like this, it's all basically in one area. Traditionally, you would have to drive from one area to the next to get it. But now with the fixed farm, you can put it in the same spot, getting the results of having a higher biodiversity. Of course, this comes at a disadvantage for the manual labor that you have to do. You have to have put way more manual labor into it uh, in the traditional way to, to keep the, the, the weeds away or to take care of the crops. You can imagine that if you have a, have to hoe between this plant or you have to hoe between the beets in this case, that's, there's a difference. Only the, already the row distance, because you have four rows and five rows in one system, which, which already makes a difference. So the funny part with this robot is that it, it translates or it, it changes its system automatically. So it can automatically change the setting of the heads that it's using and it's, we'll, we'll, we'll get there uh, when we go walk, walk through it a little bit. Uh, you can see that it can automatically adjust its settings to, uh, to the pixel where it's at. So it's really taking care of the individual plants instead of taking care of an entire field. So it's way more accurate than a traditional system. So maybe I think it's a good way to, to walk a bit towards the robot to see what it's doing. Right now. Yeah. Can you yeah, tell yeah. anything about the robot, about its sun panels, about its autonomous drive? Yeah, that's a good, good way, we can, we can do that. So the robot, this is robot one. It's a machine that's uh, a working bed width of three meters, uh, driving with uh, somewhere around three meters 20. It has 10 arms, uh, which are uh, electrically powered. It's powered using solar panels, which are on the top uh, down there. Uh, there are batteries inside in case there's no uh, sun th that day. What we see is when it's driving, uh, like, like it is driving right now, it comes off the field at the same battery charge as it went on it. So the, it just uses the power provided by the sun right now. That way we need no diesel at all. We have no uh, extra power consumption required from the net, just runs by itself. And I think that's a really nice advantage, uh, particularly when you think about the diesel prices right now, you think about the savings that you can have when you use this type of machine. Um, so what you see it doing right now, it's, it's, it's using the four, the four front arms to do hoeing between the plants uh, and to take care of the, basically take care of the crops that way. But another thing what you see it doing is you can see that it can move each arm individually to, to, to go past the, uh, the individual plant rows and that way taking care of it. Also what you can see it do is it can, you, know, you see it's shifting the size right now, adjusting Please go a little bit closer to the yeah, road. Must be more clear. Go. Yeah, thank you. We're going closer to this robot. You can what it's doing. We're walking backwards. Right now, what you see it doing is it's hoeing between these red beets with the four, four arms. Um, that way, removing the weeds in between them and allowing the robot to do the right thing. What's funny part is you see it right now is it's moving the arms side by side and changing the the setting of the arms, so changing from a 40 centimeter planting width to a 50 centimeter planting width in one driving go and then moving on. So also the moving up and down of the, the arms, it's done automatically by, by the machine. And that way you can just change completely different planting system um, in one run, allowing this biodiverse cropping at a industrial scale to be done automatically. Now, this is one of the great advantages of this machine is that you can reconfigure it while running, not having to go back into the, to the shop to do the changing, but do it it's done automatically. Right now, we're just using the hose, but you can imagine what happens when you're using the active, the active tools as the streamer and as, as the rotating arrow to, to change the system. 
So what you see that that is doing right now is see, just lifting and pull it, so pulling the arms up and down to change the the, the, the driving. <coughs> so this gives you a rough impression of what. Uh, sorry, yeah. Yes. What if I want yes. another tool in my specific crop? Yeah. So basically, what you can do. This is an example uh, uh, of the tool. We're, we're going to see it back that there are different tools you know, run. So, you'll see the system down there, it's the hose, these heads. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this is a, a streamer head, which is used to cut down uh, plants that are already growing. Because the funny part is when you do this way of cropping, you don't actually need to get bare soil. You can just trim down the plants that you need to have a little bit lower than your main crop. That way, keeping the soil fully covered. And, and the funny part of having a covered uh, soil area is that it's way more climate resilient. It's way more climate resilient than uh, than when you have the, the bare soil because of the root system that's already there. And that way, buffering the water in the top area of the soil and enabling um, yeah, so a more constant uh, water availability for the, for the plant of the knee. I hope this answers the question, Cindy. Uh, if there's somebody uh, wanting to know more, they, I can answer it right a, now. Uh, there was a fact. Yeah, there's a question in the audience down here. Yes. And um, uh, somebody wanted to know uh, the, um, the unkraut. Uh, yeah, I will. Know. The, the, the wheat will be uh, lasered? Or is it like yeah, so there's the question if we can use laser tools to remove the weeds. Uh, technically, we can. Uh, in research production, there's already a laser module uh, running. Uh, there's some issues with safety when you're using laser in the open air. Mm -hmm. So this is really into the research area. Okay. Uh, and particularly in Europe, there's quite some limitations on what you're allowed yeah. to do with, uh, with laser. And, um, so. Uh, this will be available probably somewhere in the next two years okay. for uh, yeah. commercial use. Okay. I think this, this gives you a rough uh, idea of the way the robot works. Um, what we're going to do right now, I think, um, is we're going to uh, try... Yeah? Uh, we've got a question here from the online audience. Uh, how uh -huh. much? How much does one unit cost with basic tools? And how, also, how many have you sold today? Uh, and I think you should include that with a little story about the onboarding program. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, the, the sales price is, is around 240k uh, euros uh, for 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 a standard unit with. Uh, uh, a set of passive tools and uh, one set of motor-driven active tools. Um, but you don't normally buy a, a robot. What you do is because it's replacing five uh, people, which normally do the manual labor, uh, what happens is when you get a robot into your company, you actually get five people in your company uh, working for you. Now, this is a different game. So what we have is an onboarding program where basically what we do is we allow your company to work together with a robot and to integrate that into your business model. Uh, in the first year, we will provide a team who is actually working with you to, to, to make the first steps and train you not to use it. And then in the second year, basically what happens is that you start using the machine yourself and we just provide to this, the backup. And then in the third year, you're good to go. Um, we're doing this right now with five uh, farms uh, down here in the Netherlands in different areas. There's 10 more uh, starting after summer, and there's a waiting list currently of 100 uh, farmers uh, to, to, to run this system. So I hope this gives you some impression on uh, uh, how many uh, units we sold and what's the waiting line. Our important goal, of course, is to grow healthy food from healthy soil in a healthy env environment. And although I'd really love to sell robots, I think that's my main goal to, 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 uh, to contribute to this world, to have a healthy soup from the healthy soil. Um, and that doing uh, by using robots. So I hope this answers the question. We have one more question. Uh, you mentioned a bed, a bed size. 
Uh, but is the width of the robot variable? Um, there is there is some variation uh, on, on, on the width. It has to do with the, the way the, the wheels are uh, set and you can use uh, spacers between the wheels. That way, basically what you can do is you can vary uh, somewhere between 2 meters 90 uh, driving uh, width and 3 meters 60 uh, driving uh, width. That's roughly the way we do it right now. Um, what we see in the Dutch uh, uh, agricultural scene is that the, the typical width is somewhere around 3 meters 15 to 3 meters 20, which is currently what, uh, what's being tested on the, on the field. I hope this answered the question for this uh, caller. I think so. Jamie, can you uh, nod or tell, <laughs> tell me something? Yeah? Okay. Yes. Oh, cool. All right. So, this gives you some impression. I, yeah, I really love the way this, this machine is driving down here. What you see really is that, that um, when you take care of crops with this machine, you can actually see the way the, the crops are, uh, what it's looking like down here. It's really, you see a very diverse, actually it's like an automatic garden where it's automatically growing uh, vegetables. In, on a, on a uh, restaurant scale. So when you see the area size of this plot, it's 1800 square meters, you can actually uh, run a small restaurant from this plot. Uh, and I think that the lucky people who are right now uh, on the Floriada, they can taste the stuff that's coming out of this, uh, this field in the, in the central restaurant uh, in Floriada. And that will have a feeling of what's, uh, what's going on. We've got another you know, question, Arendt. Go right ahead. We've got another question. How does the seeding and planting system work? Is there a minimum distance between seeds and is the position of the seed precisely known? Uh, yeah, so, so the seeding modules, we currently have stop planting with plugs. Uh, so we do not uh, have a, a, an individual seeding module right now. The way the system works is that you have these... these hold it for a second. <laughs> so the way the system works, when we go down a bit, yeah, so you have this, this metal plate and there's the passive tool on it. Um, what you can do is you can mount all different types of modules. In this case, it's the hoe down there. There's the streamer head, which is an active tool. And what we have is different uh, modules down there. So there's a gripper, for example, which can pick up things and plant them somewhere. And we have a, a rotary harrow, which can go underneath it. And we have, a, so the plug planter, it's a, we have an option for a seeder. Um, and that way we could, you could do seeding, but you'd have to do it using a, a, an engineering company that makes these things. What we do in the onboarding uh, programs, we actually connect the, the farmer with the guys that make this module. That way, you're creating the system that you need. Uh, what we also uh, have with re respect to the precision, actually what this system does, it can position this plate within one millimeter accuracy of any location on the field. That way we can be sure that what we do is registered at millimeter accuracy into the, the, the pixel farming system and allowing you to plan the actions around the plants at very high precision. So that's actually the way it's, uh, it's working. So when we do planting or seeding, you could achieve individual seed position accuracy of somewhere uh, in the sub-centimeter area. So somewhere between uh, two to five millimeters accuracy. I hope this, this answers it a little bit. I'm sorry for, I'm sorry for the long answer. <laughs> not that good at providing short answers. Yes, so, uh, I, I hope this covers the, 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 the question. So, you, you, the, the, using the planting, uh, you could add different plugs, and that's actually the way this, this uh, area was, uh, was created, is the, that the plants were seeded in a, in a greenhouse into small plugs of compost. And these plugs are planted into the soil, into a hole, which can be then be, be recorded by the robot to be, to be uh, uh, maintained by the robot, which is actually the, the, the largest amount of work in, the, in this area. 
uh, and then in the end it could be harvested by the robot as well. Uh, currently we don't do that at this field, but it uh, can be done. So another question: yeah. uh, Is yeah. the machine using vision to steer it, or is it using GPS? Yeah, that's a great question. I always like it. Um, this machine is running on GPS, uh, RTK actually, uh, to, to, to have its basic positioning. And then we come at an accuracy of roughly uh, three to five centimeters, uh, which is the, the, the accuracy of the, the, the basic system. And we use computer vision to actually um, uh, correct the, the, the tools to get to uh, the millimeter accuracy level. So what the computer system, vision system does is it actually records what it sees from the plants on the, uh, in the soil. It compares that to the data layers that it's provided by, by a different system. And then it maps that together. And that way we get into a, a millimeter accuracy uh, uh, positioning system, which is, uh, uh, from what we see right now, more than enough to do the, the real uh, uh, high quality uh, so, or plant plant uh, care. So, <clears throat> I think and I, there's a colleague of mine came with uh, Mark. Thank you. Came with different tools. So, what we see down here is, is an example of a module that's been made to to with, with a farmer. Uh, in this case, this was uh, from Guren from Velhorst uh, to uh, remove the weeds with a more active way. Because one of the issues when you're uh, using hose is that you need a certain driving speed to have a cutting uh, quality, to have, to have a good qu cutting quality for the for the, the weeds. When you use this this system, it actually uh, uh, rotates and removes weeds in, in an active way. That way, you don't need to drive that fast, and you can be very accurate in removing weeds around the plant. And if you look at the videos which are available on the YouTube channel or on the on the website you can actually see this machine uh, into action. Now this is the one uh, with, with pins working on it and what Mark has down there is one where we have cutting blades, which is a, a different way when you have more um, uh, you know, uh, larger weeds. Of course, you wouldn't want them, but you might have them. Um, a thistle is one of these examples which you actually want to get rid of. With this machine, you can use the computer vision to detect the thistle and remove it right away. You could also use a drill, which is also a module that's available. Uh, you could use the laser, as we were mentioning earlier in the system, in the, in the session. Uh, so there's a lot of options to take care of the plants. And that's really one of the fun parts of this machine, that it's, that it's not just one action that you can do with one machine, uh, and that you would need five or 10 machines to do all the actions, but you can have one system just change the modules for the, for, the, for the activity that you need to, to do to take care of the plant and uh, uh, keep the general system, have the same data layers, have the same program, programmability uh, with a way, way, way lower investment in getting your, uh, basically your autonomous farm going. So I think, yeah. I think uh, we are done. Uh, I don't get any more, oh. Question, are the tools attached, cabled on the arms by hand? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's there's currently no, no automatic tool changer available. There, there has been some sessions uh, by guys doing that, so you could do it. But what we see right now is when you're thinking about changing uh, the tools uh, on the machine. Now, maybe we can ask uh, one of the engineers down there who actually have to do this, Mark, <laughs> yes. how much time does it take to change the tools? It's not that not that hard. There's only uh, he just, doesn't uh, have any sound, uh, Alan. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, let, let, let me give let, let me give him the sound. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Can you hold it? Up? Yeah. All right. So, hello, everybody. Hi. Awesome. <laughs> hello. So actually, it's not that hard to actually replace them. They're just four bolts that you have to take off. Uh, you put this one underneath it. There's the same bolt, so you don't have to have different size bolts. Uh, you take the tool, you put them on, and then you put the wire out and put them in. So basically, within five minutes, you change all the tool sets to whatever you need. So it's either you have different tools on the front row and on the back row. That's all depends on what what you need as farmer. 
Yeah, so you can combine the cool. different tools in order to do, for example, soil preparation and taking care of the weed in one robot go. Yeah, yeah. For example, I can show it here. We have the we have the plows in the on the on the front uh, front row. I can put the mowers on on the back, and you you have the same tools that is actually yeah you can work with it. Yeah. So. Okay. So I'm going to ask our audience, Michael, do you have a good answer to your question now? Can you let me know that? Yeah, okay. Okay, then I think we have had the questions of the audience, unless someone's right. still going to pop up. All right, then I get back to the uh, end. <laughs> yes, see ya. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. No I think it's all about... I think we can wrap yeah. it up, uh, Arendt. Uh, the questions uh, are uh, done from our online audience. So, so I'm, I'm satisfied. <laughs> ah, I always love to lost the story. So, guys, thank you very much for uh, watching this show. Uh, come down to the Floriada uh, in Almere. It's a great uh, way to see what we're doing down here. It's a lovely field and also a, a nice way to... Uh, to see uh, the Dutch um, way of doing agriculture in, in a smart city environment. Thank you for watching. My name is Aaron Kroeg, I'm from Pixel Robotics and I hope to see you another time.